Hello everybody, this is Rudra Pradhan here. Welcome to Engineering Econometrics. Today we will start with a new concept that is on panel data modeling. We have already discussed various types of you know econometric models that to in a cross sectional setup and that to in a time series setup. The difference is that you know we have cross sectional data and then we apply regression modeling to the cross sectional data and which we call a type of you know cross sectional modeling where the sample is a exclusively cross sectional type and the other part is the uh, using time series data that to the structure is called as a time series modeling. Now, in the real, real life scenario we have a we have couple of problems where the sample size may be very small and uh, that too with actually with respect to either cross sectional data or with respect to time series data. So, now we like to discuss a concept here where we can do the pooling that means, bringing both cross sectional data and time series data and then you know have a kind of you know new data structure or the kind of you know new data set where by default we will have a more and more sample because we are clubbing time series data with you know cross sectional data. The same engineering problem and same kind of you know modeling that to the kind of you know simple regression modeling and then when we use this kind of you know data where we are pulling the time and cross then we co we will have a kind of you know new data structure that is what simply called as you know panel data structure. So, when we are pulling the data time with cross sectional types then in the first end we call it a pool data and on the on the basis of you know pool data we try to integrate some kind of you know specifications and that to there is a chance of you know uh, structural kind of you know difference and when we bring that kind of you know structural difference then we call as you know panel data model so now let us see what is exactly that, that particular concept and how we can use this panel data models to solve some of the engineering problems and as per the decision making you know requirement. So, let us see how is the kind of you know structure. So, first structure is that you know uh, to know the data structure that to with respect to pool data and panel data and the objective is it to you know solve some of the engineering problems by using the time series data as well as cross sectional data. Since we are pulling time series data with the cross sectional data by default it is a kind of you know different structure. So, by default some kind of you know difference will be there in the modeling setup. So, we like to check what are these difference and how we have to bring the kind of you know uh, 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 you know concept so that we can analyze the engineering problems more accurately and that to as per the requirement of of a uh, of a kind of you know situation uh, where uh, a, you know initially we may have some kind of you know scarcity of you know samples because of you know uh, non availability of data that to in a time series setup or in a kind of you know cross sectional setup. So, the advantage is that you know when we will be pulling time and cross then by default sample size will be high and then we can address the problem more accurately. 
So, let us first understand what is exactly the concept and then we will go ahead with the kind of you know discussion. So, in this particular you know lecture we are exclusively going to discuss uh, some of the concept like you know panel data, then pool data, uh, various panel data models and that too we specifically cover fixed effect model, random effect model and generalized method of methods of you know moments. So, uh, so, the starting is that you know to understand the panel data first. So, panel data combine is simply time series with cross sectional, such that you know the observation on the same variables from the same cross sectional sample are followed over two or more different time periods or uh, the, the, uh, the structure may be is you know somewhere different with you know you know same time series data uh, with two or more different cross sectional you know situations. So, that is what you know either way. So, that means what we like to do here. So, we have cross sectional structure and time series structure. Uh, symbolically we can put you know i as a, a you know a representative to cross sectional setup and t as a representative to time series setup. So, that means technically for every variable so when we report the sample. Uh, if you you know keep constant t and allow i vary that that simple representation is called as you know cross sectional uh, you know type and again keeping i remain constant uh, for a particular cross sectional you know situation then allow t to vary then that particular uh, structure is called as a time series you know setup and again uh, i will vary and t will vary uh, means they go to you know they vary together then that particular structure is called as you know pool data and panel data. So, now uh, 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 so, uh, so obviously the structure is, is simply like this. So, let me bring the kind of in you know, a situation here. Uh, so, the situation will be here. So, uh, let us say x is a variables uh, 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 then y is another variable. So, this is what called as a dependent variable this is called as a, you know independent variable for any engineering problem. So, what will it do? So, we the first end requirement of engineering econometrics uh, you know uh, as per you know uh, any models or you know uh, as per any kind of you know uh, techniques. So, we we have a specification about i and t. So, what will you do here? So, let us i is a constant here 1 and t allowed to vary 2, 3, 4 like this. Okay. So, then obviously, there will be some kind of you know entry to both x and y Ob obviously, it, it the entry should be uniform um, as per the you know cross uh, you know the regression uh, analysis requirement. So, here uh, keeping i equal to 1 and allow t to vary and uh, uh, not specifically i exactly equal to 1. So, either it is fixed at 1 or if not it is fixed at 2 then it the, the t will vary or it will be fixed at you know say 3 or 4 and 5 something like that. So, let us the fixed at a, a point of you know m then allow t to vary. The other type of you know structure is here again putting actually i and t and then same x and y. So, this is independent variables and this is dependent variable. What we supposed to do here? We supposed to put you know i you know uh, in stage constant uh, allow i to vary. So, that means let, let us take uh, uh, t constant then i allowed to allow to vary like this. So, in this case better to put you know t left hand side and i in the right hand side. So, the uh, variation can be uh, more appropriate. So, again either this will be constant or t uh, this will be constant or uh, you know it will up to you know k point you know kind of you know specification. So, here you know we have k time period uh, particular time period and then the sample will vary like this and obviously, the entry will be uniform entry will be you know with respect to x and y. So, this is what actually the simple understanding about the you know panel data. So, that means, uh, you know uh, uh, if you allow i constant and t vary that structure is called as a time series structure and uh, keeping t constant uh, i will vary that is called as you know cross sectional uh, structure and what will it do here just you know. Uh, uh, let us say this is uh, uh, remove these ones then allow 
uh, uh, i equal to 1 here, then t up to let us say 5 and again uh, allow i equal to 2, then again we can start with 1, 2, 3, 4 and by default the entry will be like this, say again 3 it will continue like this. Okay. So, similarly here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 like this and allow this you know 1 will be remain constant, then at time period t against there are couple of samples and time period 3 then against a couple of sam sample periods like this we have to just you know uh, bring into a particular you know structure where by default sample size will be a, you know uh, means a, a, it will be a, you know in a kind of you know increasing trend. So, what is happening? A, a, if you follow this one so this ones, then this particular structure simply called as you know pool data structure and then we like to study the impact of i and t uh, by default that represents the panel data structure. So, uh, uh, first you bring the you know uh, data and then we try to you know study the uh, specification with respect to i and t. A, a of course, uh, the basic setup will be with respect to dependent variable and independent variable, but in between so the I specification and T specification can be actually a, you know use and then we try to explore the particular impact of I and T that to the that to in the relationship between a, you know uh, independent variable and dependent variable. Uh, so, this is what the uh, simple uh, understanding of you know uh, panel data structure. So, let us come to this you know uh, situation. Uh, so, here uh, uh, whatever I have already mentioned. So, the first understanding is the uh, pulling a, a pulling the time series data and cross sectional data and create a new data structure that is either called pool data or panel data. So, for the data is concerned, so there is no much difference between pool and panel. So, both are in the first instance same, but in the case of you know panel data, it is something more than uh, you know uh, whatever you know we have already you know pulled. So, that means technically on the top of pool data, we try to explore the impact of you know cross sectional unit and time series unit while linking dependent variable with independent variables. That is what the basic you know signal about the pool data and panel data. So, now the first question is why we need panel data? Of course, I have already highlighted a couple of things. Let us you know uh, uh, brief about this particular you know requirement. So, in the first instance uh, there are at least you know three specific reasons why we need actually panel data. First uh, point in that to the requirement of you know increasing sample size and uh, second it can provide a, you know better insights into analytical questions that cannot be answered by using either time series data or cross sectional data because some variations uh, with respect to cross sectional type and some variation with respect to time series type is highly required. Uh, uh, to you know address the particular you know engineering problem that to uh, while linking uh, the cause and effect relationship uh, you know between uh, some of the engineering problems and uh, uh, in fact allow, uh, you know uh, it can allow uh, it can allow to determine uh, whether the sa same people are you know unemployed year after year or whatever different individuals are unemployed in different years. That means, technically uh, these are the deals uh, you know uh, we, we, we are supposed to actually address and uh, then explore uh, you know their impact and the kind of you know influence through the help of you know uh, pulling both time series data and cross sectional data. So, it is not uh, you know something uh, you know only to increase the sample size but it will give you much kind of you know uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, importance uh, while addressing the problem because uh, there is a two types of you know variations uh, which you are you know observing here while you know addressing some of the engineering problems so it can allow researchers to avoid omitted variable problems that otherwise would create you know bias in the cross sectional setup sometimes you know 
while a linking time series data uh, some missing observation will be there and while addressing again cross sectional data some missing observation will be there. So, now while a, you know doing the pool and you know using the panel. So, uh, we are just uh, you know uh, clubbing both the kind of you know situations as a result somehow the missing a uh, uh, missing variables or the omitted variable bias will not be actually so uh, you know uh, so uh, you know so you know I mean kind of you know uh, problematic uh, while addressing the uh, you know engineering problems. So, that is what the advantage of this particular you know panel data and that to uh, panel data modeling that is what the beauty of this particular you know so, uh, you know uh, um, you know data structure. So, here uh, you, you know the issue is that you know uh, while addressing time series data if there is any kind of you know missing that may be you know uh, bring some kind of you know issue and again uh, same thing happens while you know addressing the cross sectional data. So, panel data will be remove all these obstacles and uh, reduce this bias uh, in the data structures while addressing some of the engineering problems. Uh, by the way, uh, so uh, 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 there are two specific advantages through which you can actually use pool data or panel data. First, the increased sample size, second we can uh, you know address the problem more appropriately by allowing the information to vary with respect to time and you know uh, cross sectional setups. So, that is what the kind of you know deal and then uh, obviously, question is you why exactly you know uh, this panel data. Again there are four different kinds of you know variables that we usually uh, use in the panel data structure. So, first one variables that can differ between individuals, but do not change over time. Uh, uh, for instance, you know race, religions, something like that. And second, uh, variables that change over time, just opposite, but they, uh, but they are same for all individuals in a given period of time. That's you know like say retail price index, then unemployment rate. These are the classic examples which can come under this group. Then third one is the variables that vary both over time and you know between cross sectional uh, you know uh, units uh, that is income, marital status uh, something like that. And uh, the fourth one is trend variables that vary in predictable ways. For instance, individuals age, then individual salary. So, these are uh, uh, things which uh, which really you know vary in a kind of you know uh, predictive, predictive you know way. So, the uh, because of these reasons, so we like to actually use panel data uh, to address some of the engineering problems. So, that means technically we have uh, we have the idea about the cross sectional data and then the cross sectional modeling and then time series data and time series modeling. Now, we have a different kind of you know flavor by having a pool data and panel data against we have the concept of you know called panel data modeling. So, now uh, after knowing the uh, concept of you know panel data, so we like to just highlight what is the advantage of this you know panel data. So, that means basically we like to bring some of the importance. Uh, of course, we have already uh, highlighted the importance. Uh, or still uh, you know we, we once again you know uh, bring this situation so that you know uh, we can actually be, uh, justify that you know panel data is a better kind of you know structure and uh, you know better uh, um, you know kind of you know uh, modeling setups through which you can uh, simplify and solve some of the engineering problem. So, panel data can be very useful for researchers who are actually interested in analyzing something that cannot be done either by the a by the use of you know time series data uh, or uh, cross sectional data means uh, only uh, I, I means either through time series data or through cross sectional data. So, that means uh, you are bound to take both the things simultaneously. Uh, a big, uh, you know uh, there may be 
you know two specific reasons for that. First one, uh, it's a loss of pool size, and second, uh, uh, you know uh, the variation may not be so appropriate uh, if you consider either cross-sectional type or you know uh, time series type. So uh, you allow both time series to you know vary and then cross-sectional to vary. So that means. Uh, you will find much kind of you know randomizations uh, while addressing some of the engineering problems. For instance, uh, we we would like to develop a model uh, that can explain the uh, you know variations that means regional variations with respect to industrial performance of a, a regions and that too for any country and uh, again that too with respect to the variations uh, you know uh, with respect to their you know research base may be capital research base or you know human research base. In this situation if you like to estimate the model using cross sectional data that are observed only in one particular year, but uh, in that sense we cannot say anything about the variations of their growth over the years. The, the uh, the other side of the game is also similar. If you use only time series data, then you know you can just check the variations uh, you know uh, of these variables over the times, and then we we are ignoring the cross sectional you know flavor. Uh, so that means technically, if you use time series data, then you have to uh, uh, you have to ignore the cross sectional variation, and then when you use cross sectional data, you are you know ignoring the time series variations. Now, what is happening if you pool and you know then use pool data and panel data both variations can do go simultaneously and that uh, in my opinion that is more appropriate and you know it may not be completely, but it is a, a, a less bias compared to either you know use of time series data or you know cross sectional data. So, likewise uh, you know there are many different you know regions you have to find out through which you can actually justify the importance of you know panel data. Of course, there is uh, some advantage and uh, there is also some disadvantage, but still uh, on the top of that panel data modeling or the use of panel data or pool data is always you know uh, good to uh, handle some of the engineering problems in order to have more sample size and uh, that to in order to have more variation in the data uh, uh, and that will be more accurate kind of you know uh, uh, scenario where we can get better inference and that too for the decision making requirement. So, uh, in uh, so coming to the mod modeling sites, so we have here actually three different setups altogether that too we have the situation called as you know uh, we have the situation called as a uh, you know what we can call as you know uh, the situation uh, what we can call as you know time series cross sectional or pool pool or you know panels right. So, see here so this is T specification this is I specification and this is I T specification. So, as a result, so the same the game is with respect to y and x. So, now how we can model uh, you know how we can actually differentiate the model with respect to data structure. So, in that case uh, we are linking y and x then uh, bringing a kind of you know mathematical model like this y equal to alpha plus beta x and then error term and uh, we are using i i subscript to to uh, ensure that you know the model is actually analyzed with respect to cross sectional data because we specify here i re represent cross sectional data and again in the same in the in the second models the same uh, you know mathematical model but instead of i we are putting actually t subscript so, which represents the use of you know time series data while doing the estimations and the, uh, doing the kind of you know analysis. And in the third models instead of you know I t we use I t together in the subscript both in the case of you know y and x and again that too with respect to the error term. 
and this particular structure technically called as you know either pool data or panel data of course uh, it is under the pool data again if you add two more uh, you know uh, uh, extra items to this models by giving this specification of you know i and t then the particular structure will be called as you know uh, uh, you know panel data so that means in that case i can write the equation like this y i t equal to let's say alpha plus delta i plus mu t and then uh, then beta x i t and plus uh, u i t so that's that could be the one of the structure of the panel data compared to the model uh, uh, here uh, you know representing the pool data structure so alpha by default will be intercept and uh, delta i and mu t so this is actually for cross sectional impact and this will be with respect to time series impact so the positioning uh, you know of the samples with respect to cross sectional and time series sometimes you know uh, may, you know sometimes uh, matter a lot while addressing some of the engineering problems uh, and that too for the decision making requirement. So, obviously, so uh, this is what the kind of you know uh, structure through which you can understand the modeling about the uh, basic kind of you know uh, you know data structure and the kind of you know panel data modeling. And uh, to understand the uh, you know clear cut view about the uh, panel data or pool data. So, I have already highlighted so with starting with you know I representation and T representation. So, in this you know in this case we are bringing one you know life problems where you know uh, we have observations. So, this is what the uh, observation that means the Excel Excel sheet will read like this for the panel data. So, this is what the sample observations which is also there in the cross sectional type and the time series type, but still we are bringing here to know uh, know what is the exact sample size uh, at the I mean, end of the day whether it is a cross sectional type or time series type or pool type okay ultimately the number of data points will be matter okay rest will follow as per the particular you know, model requirements now <coughs> here we are putting state as the cross sectional uh, you know type and year is with respect to uh, you know time series type so, you will find the cross sectional types are you know having lots of variations. So, for instance, A L A L. So, this is actually one cross sectional unit and then A K A K this is another cross sectional unit A Z A Z that is third cross sectional unit. So, different states in a country. So, similarly, A R A R another uh, you know cross sectional unit C A. C O C T D D C F L like this, so the different cross sectional units, and again in the uh, in the time series sites we have 1993, again we have 1993. So that means if the cross sectional setup here on one cross sectional setup, then in that is with respect to you know time 90 and 93. So that means here uh, two cross sectional units in a particular you know state and then uh, we have two different data that means technically so for a particular state we have two time series data and again uh, keeping time constant we have a different cross sectional data so here uh, you know i and this is represent representation of i and this is representation of t so i varies with respect to all these you know cross sectional variations and t varies with respect to 90 and 93 that means we have two different time periods and we have couple of you know uh, cross sectional uh, you know types so then we are you know just bringing together and then make a kind of you know data structure which we call as pool data and then uh, we give some specification and finally we can call panel data so this is how the kind of you know uh, structure. So, this is how the specification about the kind of you know uh, cross sectional and that is with respect to actually a uh, time. So, that means uh, technically we can create two different dummy, uh, dummies in the 
uh, in the linking between y and x that is what we declared earlier delta i and mu j. So, that is called as you know dummy representation only. If there are actually two cross sectional then uh, delta will vary from you know uh, delta 1 to delta 2 or you can put you know delta as the symbol then the sample variation will be 0 1 or 1 2 kind of in a uh, scenario. Similarly, if the time series uh, data will vary, so we like to check how many variations are there. So, keeping time, so we can give specification uh, you know since in this particular data set we have two different times. So, we can start with 0 1 or you can put 1 2. So, 1 represents for the year 90 and 93 represents uh, the kind of you know uh, uh, two, two or you can put you know 0 for 90 and 1 for 93. So, now after having this kind of you know, uh, you know uh, excel spreadsheet. So, we can classify actually two different uh, you know data set one with respect to let us say uh, that is with reference to time one with respect to uh, 90 and another with respect to say 93 then finally, we are pulling these two then it becomes a call as you know uh, big data and then pull data and the panel data. So, likewise we have here actually couple of samples. So, we this is 20 different uh, observations and that too with both cross sectional and time and if you only consider 90 then by default the sample size technically will reduce to 10 and again if you uh, allow uh, you know uh, time to vary and you specify only one cross section then ultimately you have two data points only. Uh, for instance, you specify for the uh, state like A L only then only two data points are there which is actually not feasible to you know analyze some problem even if it is a bivariate structure because two sample size cannot be used for the kind of you know model estimations or the kind of you know model validation. So, we need actually more sample. So, now with this particular you know data structure if you do not allow pool and panel then the uh, the analysis will not be very effective and even if you can get the estimated output. So, the reliability of the output will be question mark and even if it will pass through reliability, but uh, uh, you cannot just generalize because of you know very very low sample size. So, to generalize any kind of an output uh, for the future requirements like you know prediction and forecasting. So, uh, uh, the, uh, the particular you know inference should be uh, available from the large uh, you know uh, data set and again allowing with it time to vary and cross sectional to vary uh, because that will give you less bias and more authentic and more variations to the data set of uh, through which you can analyze the engineering problem more, accru more, more accurately and more appropriately. Uh, so, uh, how, uh, how will it go about this particular you know uh, structure and bring the kind of you know variations and uh, the kind of an estimation we will discuss in the next lecture. So, we will stop here today. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.